Hello everybody, this is Ashley Lovell. I am the author of The Wish, Awakened Evil, and my newest book out today is Wicked Curse. So today's video, I am going to be doing plotting. Now it is one of my favorite things to do when I'm writing a story or a book series. I put my most effort into that, but I also love to do like um, characters and backstory. So for today, I actually wrote it like all down. So I'm going since, so since uh, Wicked Curse is my news book, I'm going to use this as a example. So, okay. so I am going to use The Wish because it's the first book in my Keeper Soul series. So since today we're going to talk about plot, I keep looking down. I keep looking down. Oh dear. Plot in a story. Okay, so if you're new to my channel and you are wanting to be an author and a writer, you're probably wondering what is plot? Okay, so plot is a sequence of events where Each affects the next one through so basically um, a plot is where so plot is a series of events that happens throughout the story so for instance like um, the wish um, Olivia finds her grandfather who was like pet like dead in the middle of the living room and then more and more and more plots happen out throughout the series. I couldn't even tell you like how many plots I have in this one. I have so many it's ridiculous. And then with Awakened Evil I have a lot. I have in this book I have like um, 10 new characters and then in this one I have like probably six new ones because most of the characters in book one and book two are in this one and also the last book so we're going I'm going to take you through a plot and I'm going to actually write it out for you on paper so um, plot. This is how I plot. The first thing that I think about is what will the story be about? And uh, so what will the story be about? What genre? Will I do horror, suspense, uh, fantasy, theror, uh, fiction, western. There's like so many to like choose from. So when I was working on um, The Wish, 
from the start, I knew I wanted to write a story about a witch. Like, that was like the main idea that I had. So when I had that idea, I wrote it down, and then it's like, okay, well, I have a witch, what else is gonna happen? So, so since I chose horror, what should the genre be? So I decided to do um, YA. And since I'm really like into um, paranormal, like ghosts and spirits, haunted houses, orbs, uh, shadows, um, items moving, uh, doors closing, windows open, items missing and reappearing in a different area. I'm really like into all of that and I've always wanted to write a story about that. So I decided with The Wish, I decided to have it be a paranormal, a YA paranormal. So I have the genre. Oh my, that's like. Okay. So I have the genre. Genre. YA fiction. Paranormal. I have all of those. Now the next question is what are the main characters doing? Now, when you think about that, it's going to take you throughout the story. What are their goals? What will happen to them if they fail? Why are they in this position? How did they get here? What led them here? You're going to come up with many different uh, questions that's going to keep constantly like coming to you until you answer them. So in The Wish, uh, I actually had it like another title, um, but I decided, me and my editor realized that the title I had wasn't really fitting the story very well. So we changed it to um, The Wish. And it fits the story really well because um, my main character makes the wish. So that goes on goes on to the next part. So since we have all of these things that we just talked about, now what is the story going to be about? The first thing that came to my mind was a girl makes a wish. Now, a girl after okay, hold on. A girl makes a wish. Now stop right there. Okay, so it would be really cool if everybody in the world could just like make one wish. <sighs> what would I wish for if I only had one wish? Well, since I'm a big huge animal lover, I love animals and I would wish for no animal abuse. That would like be um, my main thing. That's what I would wish for. Okay, so. So my main character, Olivia, she's 17, she lives with her mom, and she's homeschooled. So when you're doing um, a character, you have to think about the backstory of that character, where they came from, who they are, what they like, what they don't like, what foods they like, uh, what annoys them, what, what they hate, what they love. Um, do they like wearing their hair up, down, straight, curly, wavy? Like, you have all these questions that you have to um, answer. But you don't have to do it, like, right away because it'll overwhelm you and, like, stress you out. But when you're writing the first draft, you will start to develop the character. That's exactly what I did with um, The Wish. It took me nine years to write the story because I kept changing things and... I wasn't really like knowing the characters that well. So when I finally understood who Olivia was and what she liked and didn't like and what scared her and what she liked and loved and all of this stuff, then through that whole nine years, I started to understand who she was and it was making it more easier for me to write her. 
and with her other and with the other characters that I have in the book. So the plot, a girl meets a witch. Holy moly, a witch. I would be freaked out and terrified. So Olivia meets a witch in the woods. Now that you brought in a new character, now you have to stop and think, okay, she just met a witch. Who is this witch? Where did she come from? Uh, how did she get here? Has she been living here all these years? And Olivia didn't even like know it or realize it. So when you bring in a new character each time, you're going to have like all these questions that you have to answer. But like I said before, you don't have to do it right away. If you're if you're four chapters into the story and you have a new character come in, you can write at the top, like, new character, and you can write the questions down below it that says, like, who's this character? Why are they here? What are they doing in the story? And then later on, you can go back and you can uh, answer those questions. Because I did that a couple of times, especially um, when I wrote Awakened Evil. I have like 15 new characters. <laughs> oh my god. 15 new characters in Awakened Evil. And I thought it was going to be really stressful to keep them all like in line and not sounding the same. But it actually worked out really well. That it was actually fine. It didn't really overwhelm me or stress me. It it it, it was fine. But if you are writing a story with like 30 or 50 characters, oh, I hope I don't ever have to do that. Um, I would just take your time. Uh, don't overstress yourself. If you're in the middle of the story and the characters pop up, go ahead and add some s character traits to it. You don't have to do it all at once. I don't. I'll just like write a note on the side, you know, what's her favorite color or what part does she have to do to stay alive or just random stuff like that so after Olivia goes into the woods and she meets this witch guess what um this witch gives her and then the witch Inga gives Olivia a wishing stone what a wishing stone how Creepy and weird and cool. Yeah, a wishing stone to make a wish, whatever you want. So Olivia takes the wishing stone and she actually really does, really does make a wish. Uh, it, that's kind of like um, you find a box or a tin box and it, on the top it says, do not open. And you go ahead and you open it and then like, you know, a bomb explodes or um, something evil comes out of it or something. So that's the moment I was thinking about. So after Olivia meets Inga and makes the wish, now bad things, like, start to happen to her. So all these things are happening to her. Um, she makes a wish. Her grandfather comes back alive again she keeps seeing a little boy she doesn't even know who this little boy is like she'll see him like in her dreams or he'll like pop up around the corner of the house and she has no idea who he is she's having all these <sighs> she's having all these bizarre dreams and black shadows are attacking her. What is she going to do with all this chaos going on? So then I had to think about, okay, her, her dad and her mom are split up. Her mom doesn't really, her mom doesn't really believe in all this stuff. So it's like, she can't go to her mom. She can't go to her dad. Her sister, is in Hawaii, Fern, her older sister Fern is in Hawaii modeling. So
so that's when Olivia, that's when I had to um, bring in another character. Um, a character that knew this type of stuff. So Olivia meets Gina, a psychic, a medium, and a paranormal researcher. Gina is the Gina is the second main character. Now, when I was probably about five years into writing The Wish, I kind of realized like Olivia's going to need somebody to like help her through this because Olivia's not really that experienced uh, with all this stuff. So I'm like, I'm gonna have to have someone like come in and help her. So that's when she meets uh, Gina. Now when I thought of Gina, I knew I had to um, think of her character details. Uh, why is she in the story? And the big main question is how will she help Olivia? Well, her house, Olivia's house is haunted. She keeps seeing black shadows. Things keep moving around. Doors are slamming. So, Olivia discovers that Gina is a psychic, a medium, and a paranormal researcher. And... Oh, is that it? So now that I have this second character, uh, Gina, Gina tells Olivia, like, okay, I, I'll come over and I'll figure this out and I'll help you. Well, Gina does go over there to help Olivia and she she gets attacked, she gets possessed, and a lot of bad things are like happening to them both and I'm gonna stop right there because I don't want to give away the whole entire book because of course I, I want you guys to buy it and read it and it is available on Amazon and print and ebook so that is my plotting and I hope it helped you and I hope you guys have a great week, and God bless, and bye.